Hello folks, well it's uh, get your big coat on time at the moment. It's been a bitterly cold day today, uh, it's early January, um, but beautifully clear and the forecast is for it to stay clear for another few hours. Temperature currently is around freezing, it's going to drop to um, probably minus two or three while I'm out and minus four or five as a minimum overnight. So in most instances, that's about as cold as it gets here in the southeast of England. So it's going to be a bit of a chilly one, but I'm hoping that the uh, lack of clouds, the clarity of the atmosphere and the fact there's no um, real moon around to bother me at the moment is going to mean I'm going to have quite a good session. The target I'm going to aim for tonight has uh, one of the cooler names of astronomical objects. It's called the Flaming Star Nebula and it sits in the constellation Auriga, uh, which is just above the roof of my house at kind of sensible o'clock at the moment. My name's John and I make videos on camping, walking and astronomy. If you like what you see in this video, then please check my channel out as you may find others that interest you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with this video. So the uh, Flaming Star Nebula is a big cloud of uh, gas and dust about 1500 light years away and I think it's about 5000 light years across and it's been illuminated by a, a very big very hot star that's hopefully visible in the photograph. Um, this star is going to burn out very fast and, and then die but it's throwing out um, a lot of energy that's uh, energizing the hydrogen molecules in this gas cloud. Now I last took this uh, target, an image of this target, about um, just over 12 months ago, I think it was in November 2020, and I'll be interested to see, I've made a few steps forward in processing knowledge, and the use of uh, um, Astro modified camera should should help here as well. So I'll be interested to see if I've made any progress. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get my scope out. This is what I'm gonna use here. My um, trusty 60 millimeter refractor on an EQM 35 mount. I'm gonna try and take an hour and a half to two hours worth of one minute exposures and see what I can get. So um, yeah. I'm going to get everything outside now and I'll see you later. So you paint a picture of a face A face that wasn't even close to Right, that's it uh, done now. Um, it's bitterly cold outside now. My equipment's getting a little bit covered with frost. Um, I belted out after a, a hundred exposures just to see how things were getting on. And I could just see this thin veil of cloud coming along. So I think I've, I've nipped in just in time. Ideally, I wanted another 20 odd exposures, but I'd have got another two or three and that would have been it, I think. So I'm going to call it a day on 101 I think it was I actually got in the end 
tomorrow I'm going to go through all the pictures, find the ones that um, are good enough to put into a stacking program. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to get all my kit in now, call it a day for the night and um, yeah, have a look at everything in the morning, afternoon. Well, it's now the next day, um, somewhat drearier and uh, danker than it was last night. Had a reasonably good clear run last night, um, but now it's dead horrible. Uh, it's cold as well. Pebbles the cat can't be bothered to go out. He'd rather sit in the conservatory looking at it and uh, pop it won't even go into the conservatory. She's kind of glued to the top of our sofa. Um, but nonetheless, the dreary weather means that it's a good day for doing your astro processing on the pictures that I took yesterday, which I've now done. I used, I think, 97 of about 101 exposures that I took. Uh, the missing ones had satellite trails going through them, so I kind of cut them out. And I produced my final image. And overall, I'm uh, very pleased with it. And I was looking back over the image that I showed you earlier on and the one that I took prior to that, just to see what sort of improvements I've made over the years. So the first time I tried this target was, I think, in 2018. And there I was taking uh, short exposures of 15 seconds or so, and I only took about 20 minutes worth using an Altaz mount and produced a picture that did show the Flaming Star Nebula. You can just about kind of pick out the um, redness of the nebula, but mostly all you really saw was stars. But nonetheless, I was quite pleased with it at the time. And then I looked at, again at the picture that I took in late 2020, where the nebula is much more visible. At this point, I was using an equatorial mount and took an hour's worth of one minute exposures. And the nebula is much more visible than it was, say, in 2018. But still, the image is dominated really by the stars that, that are there. So since I took that picture in 2020, um, I'm using the same kit, the telescope and mount that you can see here. Um, the camera that I used in 2020, I'm still using, except I've had since had it astro modified to better pick up the um, red hydrogen gases that uh, make up this nebula, basically. In addition to that, there's a few other tweaks. I use Starnet++ now to minimize the stars so they don't overwhelm my image. And I've done some videos on how I do that, um, if you want to have a look at some of those. The astro modification to the camera means that I shoot at ISO 800 typically now, instead of ISO 1600 that I was before. And this means that my images are less noisy. When I was out last night, the temperature was around minus two, which is um, fairly cold, which helps reduce the noise. Previously, I was out in a November evening and I suspect the temperature then was probably more typical of like five, six degrees, something like that. So the using the lower ISO and a lower outside temperature gives you less noise in your image. And in addition, the final kind of improvement, I suppose, that I made was um, I took about an hour and a half's worth of exposures instead of an hour. Um, so I made a bunch of like minor modifications plus the astro modification to my camera to um, generate this latest image, which I think is substantially better than the last image and um, yeah I hope you'll agree maybe you'd let me know in the comments. Um, it's worth bearing in mind that the astro modification to a camera costs around £100 so it's a fairly cost effective way of generating much better pictures than you otherwise would do and I have done a video on um, astro modifying my camera just after I first did it to say whether it was worth it but I hope you'll agree that um, the image here at the end of this video shows that um, astro modification 
is definitely something that you um, ought to consider provided you're not trying to use that camera for like normal day-to-day -day use if you like because that that won't work out too well but anyway that's uh, enough uh, waffling from me I'll put the picture up now I hope you agree that it's better than my previous two and I look forward to seeing you again next time cheerio Thank mm -hmm. you.